Glasses. There we are. There we are. I can see much better. Uh, welcome. Uh, no kitty. I have cats that are wanting to involve themselves in the meeting, and I apologize. Uh, I'm putting more review material up for you. In fact, I have review material that isn't on the site that should be, and you'll be able to use that over the during your exam. Uh, we've talked about them. I've lectured about them, uh, but you need to have them, and I apologize for them not uh, being present on the site. I thought they were, and I was wrong, and I apologize. In fact, I probably will extend your test in period from two to three days, uh, or give you an extra day so that you have time to take the test and, and prepare a little more if you need that time. But we have covered a lot of the material, and uh, the things that we've talked about in the class previously has come uh, largely from the review material that I had already written and uh, posted, I thought, on your class. But you need to have that so you can have it right handy when you're taking your test, uh, along with the notes that you've made on your reading and other things. I, I will also be testing on current events. I will ask about current events in Texas in the news and in national news. I've uh, encouraged you to follow what's going on in uh, the national government, uh, even though this isn't a national government course, what happens in the national government affects us here in Texas. So it's important to know what's happening. Uh, they will not be difficult questions. They will be quite obvious questions. And if you don't haven't been following the news, you can look them up online because researching online, like I've said, is available to you uh, on this exam. Uh, if you uh, are taking the exam and want to look up a current event question, uh, do it using Google, uh, whatever uh, search engine you like to use. So be sure you're uh, cognizant of uh, Texas resources by the way, Texas Tribune is a newspaper, online newspaper that is free to you. Uh, newspapers in Texas require subscriptions. And like I said before, it used to be that the college provided you with free subscriptions. And for some reason, they decided they'd save a lot of money by not giving, subscribing to the Houston Chronicle and to the Dallas Times Herald and, and statewide papers, the Austin American Statesman that could provide you with news about what's going on in Texas politics. Uh, I don't know why not. Uh, they did it before, but they're not doing it now. So anyway, uh, a, a, a few things that are there we'll talk about. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, I am so sorry. But uh, first of all, are there any questions that you have based on your study so far and reading the textbook material? Okay, obviously not so far, uh, but maybe later, maybe later. We'll see. Um, so anyway. Let me uh, reiterate some of the high points of what we had been talking about before. Uh, and I'm going to uh, my home page here on another computer to look at it. Again, test two. Hang on a second. Yeah. 
uh, test two, political participation, uh, available November 3rd through 5, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there's a three-day period already. Uh, Professor, can yes. you, this is Jocelyn. Can you open it up today because I'm going on surgery tomorrow and I will not be able to take the test or be able because I'm going to be in the hospital those days? I guess I could do that. I guess I could do that. Uh, remind me a little bit later toward the end before we go and I'll uh, set that up accordingly. Uh, let me think about how to handle it because uh, it's going to, I've got to do several changes on my end to do that, but I can take care of it. But let me know so that uh, if you want to take it or, uh, now, that's fine. We'll set that up. Um, Okay, other questions, any problems in that regard for anybody else? Okay, all right. Well, uh, as you see, be sure you have read all of your material. As you'll notice, uh, I have links under the reading assignments to all of the chapters in the, in the book, uh, like the politics of public opinion, voting in elections, the media, political parties. So be sure you have read all the material in your textbook and hopefully have taken notes on your reading. Uh, there's nothing better than reading and taking notes so that you can, not only does the reading solidify in your brain if you're writing it down, you have notes then from your reading to help you during the exam. So. Hopefully you've done all of your textbook reading and worked through uh, some of the questions and suggestions uh, and summaries and key terms, that sort of thing, which are linked in there uh, if you look under reading assignments uh, under our unit. Uh, okay, here, let me find where we are. One and this is we're going to cover from what chapters uh six through to nine or chapter six through to ten uh oh for the for the readings no for the test yeah for the for f the the test covers uh political participation and the reading assignments for this are chapter in the in in your online textbook are chapter six seven, eight, and nine. Those were your reading assignments for the, in your textbook. So those are the material, that's the material, public opinion, voting in elections, the news media and political parties from your textbook. So those are the ones that are covered in this exam. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I was going to ask you, what do you think about now that we have until today or tomorrow to for open registration to vote? Oh, oh, well, not only registration to vote, but to, uh, you there's early voting right now. If you have already already registered to vote, uh, uh, you can go in and vote today, although the polls have not opened other than for early voting. And so you could go, if you have registered to vote already, boom, you can go do it today. Uh, if you've not registered to vote, get down to the clerk's office. 30 days before the election. Oh, can't vote now. Oh, if you've not, that's right. 30 that's days. I'm sorry, if you haven't registered to vote already, you can't vote. It's that you have to register at least 30 days ahead of time. So there you are. Uh, if you haven't registered to vote, you can't vote. Uh, so uh, be aware of that next time if you haven't registered to vote. And always please register to vote simply because, hey, there can be really great people in office if great people like you get out and vote. And then those people that you elect and go vote for will do the things that you, they promised you. And you can hold their feet to the fire and get what you want out of government. Uh, 
But if you don't vote, then the other guy, guys who don't reflect your wishes and needs and and hopes for the future will be running the government and they ain't going to do the things that are going to be necessarily good for you. Oh, it might drip down to you a little bit, some of it, but not as much as if the people that are going to reflect your values, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, God bless you, if whichever one you are, that's what voting is all about, getting the people in who will reflect your needs and desires and, and, and values. Okay, so test two is available on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for you. Uh, and be sure you've read the material and have looked through your notes and have prepared notes and have taken notes on what I have given you. And I apologize again that I had not posted the notes that I have read to you and, 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 uh, and, and need to work through, but I will do that immediately after completing the class and our meeting today. Um, but like I said, you have some of that from uh, our last meeting and can review it uh, on the online uh, pr presentation that's been saved for you. Okay, let's go to, uh, hang on a second. Well, once again, we're in a general election time period where uh, we hold them every two years, general elections, every two year cycle, we elect members of the entire U.S. House of Representatives and the entire House of, Texas House of Representatives, as well as lower chambers of almost every other state's legislatures. Most state legislatures, as well as the U.S. Congress, the House of Representatives in state legislatures and in, in uh, U.S. Congress serve a two-year term of office, which is why we have a, an election cycle on a two-year basis. Every two years we have major elections. Uh, and then every other two-year cycle is the presidential election and gubernatorial elections in, because we generally a governor serves a four-year term of office as well. So uh, uh, we elect uh, the membership of the Senate, but about a U.S. Senate, for instance, about a third of them come up. But then again, that's not uh, principally a concern for us here in Texas government, but that's why we have that two-year cycle and every other time are electing senators same but you know the u.s texas senators serve a four-year term of office too so they will come up on a, uh, about half of them every two-year period uh the uh we're in the we, we, we're in the primary election period right now. In the primaries, we're uh, the two the two parties, the Democratic Party and Republican Party, hold primary elections in the months before uh, the summer. It's these party elections, and they're funded by the parties and the state government each in each state. Uh, each party, the Democratic and Republican Party, select candidates to run for office that are open in that November's general election. And whoever wins the party nomination for a given office uh, automatically appear on the general election ballot for that general election year. Republicans have a political primary and the Democrats have a political primary where they select nominees. And you go vote in if you want to go vote for Republicans, you go to the Republican place. If you go to the want to vote for the Democrats, you take part in the Democratic primary. Uh, in Texas, our two party primaries are held in March, on the first Tuesday of March. Other states hold their primaries at other times throughout the first part of the general election year. By the way, the first state in the nation to hold a primary is traditionally the New Hampshire primary, which is held in February. That's kind of a bellwether. 
showing to the rest of the country where things are going, at least in terms of national elections. And also you get a sense of uh, where, where we're going politically. Uh, the, both the Democrats and Republicans hold their primaries on the same day. So like, for instance, if you uh, early voted today, you would have gone in and voted in the Republican primary if you wanted to vote Republican or the Democratic primary if you wanted to vote uh, Democratic. And you go into the same polling place, but you pick to vote Republican or Democrat and and pick those people accordingly. And you can pick either one of them, actually, in many respects, when you're voting in the actual election. Uh, if no one gets a majority, by the way, you know, greater than 50%, then there's a runoff election held 30 days after the primary election. And you go to your voting precinct. Uh, each county is responsible for setting up the election in their county. Uh, for the primary and general elections, the county is divided into numerous voting precincts. You go vote at the central location for voting in your precinct. Uh, we went this morning to a neighborhood uh, school and, uh, no, no, we went to the library this year. Excuse me, I forgot. We went to a public library. Could have been in another precinct. It would have been at a public school, wherever. Could be a firehouse. It could be a church or community center, wherever they decide that they'll have it set up. Hang on. That's okay. My wife's phone is going off, and so she's about to get it. And great music, great music. But here we go. Uh, again, in Texas on primary day, you can choose whether to take part in the Democratic or Republican primary, your choice. This is called an open primary. You can pick or choose. We have an open primary in Texas. Uh, uh, a characteristic of the closed primary is that uh, once you're uh, voted, you're restricted to uh, vote in any runoff election in that party. You can't go vote in a runoff election for the other party once you voted, because once you vote, they stamp your card, voted Democrat. So if there's a runoff election in a primary, you got to go vote in the Democratic runoff. You can't go vote in the Republican runoff because... Generally, you could do, if you did that, then you'd go vote a, for a real guy that you know is a real loser, and that will help the other party, your party, that you just slipped in and, and snuck in and because you wanted to damage the better candidate in the other party. Uh, okay. Again, if you've read your assignment, reading all of this is in there but i'll post these notes for you so that you have them when you're taking your test and you can look things up there and hopefully like i said you've taken notes of your own uh, we've talked about the presidential primary system the first like i said new hampshire is the first one in a presidential year uh and we uh uh uh, vote in primaries for presidential candidates for our nominee in the Democratic Party or Republican Party, whichever one are, you're involved in. Um, and then who actually votes for president? Well, you know, we go in on a presidential election year and we vote for a president or a nominee for our party in the primary. And then in the general election, we vote for a president. But <clears throat> is it whoever gets the majority in Texas in the presidential election? Is that the person that's the uh, uh, going to get the a nomination from Texas or the the votes all of vote the electoral college votes? Uh, and because it's the electoral college that actually votes the president in. The, uh, the election in a state in a presidential election is electing essentially delegates to the electoral college. 
this is confusing in the sense that well, I thought I was voting for the president. No, you're voting for the electors who will go elect the president. Well, why can't we just vote for the president? Because that ain't the way it's been set up. It should be, but it isn't. Should we reform that? Boy, I'd hope so. But we're not going to because it's kind of there and people don't change things readily. And it would be a massive change to do so. But, uh, for instance, when uh, Trump was uh, up for election, uh, re-election, uh, uh, re uh, was it real? Yeah. Uh, the votes were taken and he'd lost. And you see, the vice president of the United States is the one who uh, makes the uh, determination as president of the Senate of the United States Senate. And again, this is Texas, but it's kind of similar in Texas. Uh, he makes the, the, the final vote uh, authorization and says, okay, I am certifying that this guy won the vote and he gets to be president. Same way, more or less in Texas. But what happened with Mr. Trump was, uh, was the January 6th riot. Trump knew that he was not going to get, uh, uh, may not, he, he, well, he claimed that he had won. And he hadn't because Joe Biden had won the most votes. And he wanted his vice president, who was a Republican, to certify that he won, even though he hadn't. And the his supporters went in and attacked the Capitol and were threatening because Trump was hinting that it would be great that if you they couldn't get in there and force the vice president to approve his having won the election when he hadn't, then they'd kill him. I mean, he was whisked away because they felt a number of people were killed by the assault of Trump troopers, um, the uh, radical supporters who went in, killed a number of policemen who were defending the Capitol. Uh, those uh, protesters went in, defecated in the House of Representatives, tore things apart. They were going through the building looking for the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, but in order to kill her. That's what they stated they were wanting to do. Uh, it was a fiasco. This is what many people say could be an end of our democracy if we continue to let that sort of behavior happen, which is kind of frightening. I mean, this is outside of our normal study of government because we've not had this happen in our country before. We've never had a, a president claim that he was elected when he were reelected when he wasn't and then sent armed troops or not troops, but supporters in to change things uh, illegally. Uh, frightening set of circumstances. Frightening set of circumstances. Okay. Uh, by the way, the Electoral College doesn't meet as a body. Uh, the Electoral College uh, send, well, the, we send state delegates to the Electoral College. These electors meet in the state, in their state, usually the state capital, on the first Monday after the second Wednesday in December after the general election in a presidential election year. At that meeting in their respective states, the state's electors cast their val ballots, their votes for the president and vice president on separate ballots. The 12th amendment to the Constitution in specifying how a president and vice president are elected requires each elector to cast one vote for president and another vote for vice president. A state's electors' votes are recorded and then sent to Congress and the National Archives as part of the official record of the presidential election. And it's the vice president, who's the president of the Senate, who makes the official notification as to who won. And again, Mr. Trump wanted his vice president to say, well, Donald Trump won, even though the votes 
said he didn't win. And that's what the riot in, in the Capitol on January 6th was all about and why we subsequently had congressional hearings as to why this happened and what was horrifically wrong about that happening as a threat to our democratic process. Anyway, these electoral college votes, uh, the, the, the electors, state electors, are picked by the state's legislatures. They're members of the party, the presidential candidate who won the most votes for president in the state's general election. These electors are chosen by the winning party and are submitted to the legislature for official selection as electors. These electors selected are always loyal party activists, usually holding leadership positions in their party, or were chosen to recognize years of loyal service to the party. Nothing in the Constitution or federal laws require the state electors to vote according to the results of the popular vote in the Senate in the states. Some states do require, however, that electors cast their votes according to the popular vote, either by state law or pledges, by pledges to their political parties. Generally, an elector will go in and vote as their people tell them to. But Mr. Trump was trying to get electors to change their vote, and uh, didn't work, fortunately, again, for our democracy. Uh, and then the Electoral College votes are counted by a joint session of Congress on the 6th of January, the 6th of January riots, okay, the attack on the Capitol. That's when the votes were counted and going to be announced in the year following the meeting of the electors. Members of the House and Senate meet in the House chamber to conduct the official tally of electoral votes. The Vice President, as President of the Senate, presides over the count and announces the result of the results of the vote. The president of the Senate, the vice president, then declares which persons, if any, have been elected president and vice president of the United States. And again, we had a, a threat of democracy uh, against our democracy by the president, who did not get reelected, but claimed he did, Donald Trump, uh, sending supporters, armed supporters, in mass, thousands, hundreds, uh, a couple of thousand people assaulted the Capitol, uh, destroyed uh, many things in the Capitol, threatened the lives of people, killed several n several policemen that were defending the Capitol. Um, incredibly unusual, frightening set of circumstances. So your vote in an election these days, your awareness of, of, of what's going on in, in, in government is crucial because uh, the governments and our system of freedom to vote the way we want to, to actually elect people that we want to and have the people that we've elected take office has been threatened, has been threatened. And again, like I said, Mr. Trump's running for can, working to run uh, again. And that's something you should be aware of in terms of what we have been talking about. Okay. So let us look real quickly here. Hang on just a second. I'm going to look at something real quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, this is uh, So here in 2305, we're looking at the national government in terms of its power to decide the future of our Supreme Court because we, uh, the future of our judicial system, our legislative system, and our executive branch. Um, and they're, they've been under threat for the past several years. Uh, a frightening set of circumstances, which is why studying about government right now and reading all of this stuff and getting it down and being able to go out and vote for people that can make a difference for a free democratic small d 
government. By the way, when I say that, I'm not, I'm saying our democracy doesn't mean that everybody's a Democrat. Uh, we are a Republic as well. That does not mean we're all Republicans. These are terms as to how government is organized, but parties have taken those two basic forms of our organization of government and adapted it for the, their creation of the political parties, the Democrats, obviously, and then the Republicans, Republic, democracy, that's where the terms come from. Okay. Uh, So, again, political participation. Uh, let's go back one other place. Are there questions, first of all? Are there questions from your reading that you didn't understand something? There's got to be somebody that has a question about what they read and say, I didn't get this. That, that, in fact, that's kind of why we meet, for you to tell me what you didn't get, so I can straighten it out for you. Professor, I do have a question. About Please, how... thank you. <laughs> okay, give it one minute. No, oh, take your time. And... Okay, well, my, question, my question was for yeah. chapter... for chapter nine. That I hold on. The division of government and partitions, polarizations. Uh -huh. I, I will. I kind of didn't understand what partition polarization means. Can you explain? Uh, political participation. Uh huh. What what exactly? Well, I know what it means, but I didn't quite understand it. Okay, uh, by political participation, we're referring to taking part in the election process primarily uh, either as a voter or as a candidate uh, as a voter you register to vote you inform yourself about who the candidates are and in our two-party system and, and the two parties control government by the way why is it just two parties? Well, the primary reason that we only have two parties working in- I thought it was more parties. I thought that it was oh. the conservative party and the well, Republican and the- Well, when we're talking about, there are two parties, the Democratic Party, capital D, capital P, Democratic Party, that is the name of the party. And then there's the Republican Party, capital R, capital P, the name of the two parties. Now, the Democratic Party today is the more liberal polit political party. In other words, they espouse ideas and policies that are supportive of minority rights, that are supportive of uh, aid to the poor, aid to the elderly, aid to the sick, who want to provide services that help people in need. The Republican Party is a conservative party these days, very conservative. Uh, it believes in uh, protecting the wealth of wealthy people because most Republicans generally are, well, in, in, in the, generally, if you're wealthy, you're a Republican, because you want, don't tax me. I want tax cuts. I want tax breaks. I don't want to pay taxes. I don't want to support old people. I don't want to support poor people. Just, I want government to take care of my business and leave me alone. Uh, I want. I don't want government interfering in anything I do, except anything I want them to interfere with. Uh, that's okay, I guess, if you believe in that. That's when I'm talking about liberals and conservatives. It's how they treat people, by and large. 
It's how they treat people by and large. Uh, I mean, most, most African Americans, most Hispanic Americans, not all in either race, tend to be Democrats. Why? Because, well, even though in the South, back in the 1800s, we had a civil war because the South, which was controlled by Democrats in the early part of the uh, 1800s, uh, and Texas itself, Texas itself was uh, a, a, a Democratic Southern state. And in fact, when we had our uh, revolution in Texas, and, and I know this is a national class, but this is making a point for you. When we had our revolution in Texas from the Republic of Texas, from white farmers and ranchers moving to Texas, and they were living in Mexico, because Texas was, was a state in Mexico at that time. Uh, but they decided, well, we want to have our own state and we want to, you know, join the union. So they had a little war. And they had a war primarily against Mexico to form Texas independence because Mexico forbid slavery in Mexico, including the state of Tejas, which was one of their states, which is Texas. And the whites who had settled in Texas revolted because, by golly, they wanted their slaves. They didn't want to pay people to work. They wanted to buy people and make them work like farm animals. Owned like you own cattle. That's what people were. Black people. Cattle to these Southerners who wanted their slaves. By and large. By and large. Because uh, if you can buy and sell a person... You're not treating them like a human being, are you? The South fought in this when there was when 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 Texas joined the South, they did it because uh, the rest of the South was slave owners, and so when the Northern states said we're we're, we're going to end, we've got to end this slavery thing, and uh, we're we're trying to push for that, uh, the Southern states said no, we're not. We're going to have a war. And what was the the civil war between the North and the South in the United States? The North said, no slavery. The South said, uh, we bought them. We brought them from Africa. We captured them. We bought them. There are cattle, these black human beings. The North said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And that's what the... Civil War was about, and Texas was on the side of the slave owners because most of the farmers and, 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 and ranchers uh, had slaves. And after the Civil War, when the South lost, we actually put Northern Republican leadership in all of the Southern states. Professor? Yes. It's funny now that you say that because in my history class, or that's the subject that we that we're talking about mm -hmm. the south and the north mm -hmm. and we got into the conclusion they they didn't want to the point that they were saying yeah they're our own property is because they were feeling that they were losing power over it mm -hmm. it was all everything regard uh powers because if, if they feel like they have a slave it was more they have power to control. They were controlling more, and that's what they wanted to control over other people. And they were treating them bad. They were blaming when the abolish. I'm gonna pronounce it really bad. Abolish, abolish, publish. Spell it for what? What? When the um about black community is when the black community uh fight for their rights and everything. They were also causing chaos around and they were blaming the black community because they wanted to still having power and control over that. Right, right. Uh, abolitionists. 
the yeah that was the worst they wanted those those people that wanted to abolish slavery were primarily northerners who didn't have slaves because well because in the north you didn't have as much of the uh, uh, farms ranches uh, and that type of agricultural needs which required a lot of cheap labor as much cheap labor as possible and they didn't want to pay people to do it because that cost a lot of money cutting into the plantation owners wealth so it's better to buy people and own them it's cheaper that was it all about it's all about money it's all about power the northern states opposed it abraham lincoln freed the slaves but that was in the north the south said we're not freeing any slaves that's where the civil war came about and the civil war the north won and the south had to do away with slavery and a lot of the south was up until this day really if you'll pardon the phrase pissed off about it and he still got southerners down here still upset still upset i remember when i was in high school years ago when you had there was a colored school and a white public school a colored public school and a white public school and when integration was called for under federal law under the presidency primarily of lyndon johnson making sure that he did away with uh, racial segregation in the south um, and the civil rights acts which said you can't you can't separate whites and blacks just because they're different races I remember that in my small town in Central Texas, uh, uh, white folks were mad, 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 angry. Well, I don't want my kids going to school in the public school. Our our CHO high school, they would name the school. Uh, we don't want black kids there, Negroes, or you know the the, the word that's used. Uh, you don't want that. And they fought it as much as they could, but they couldn't because it was a federal law. And in some states, the the federal government sent troops in to make sure that schools were desegregated. They had to send troops in to make it happen. That's how stuck in the racial segregation the South was. And they wanted to keep it. But the federal government said no much like in the previous century they said we're not going to have slavery so there we are there we are that's that's a significant element that you brought up and, and indeed i appreciate your mentioning it okay uh hmm. other matters here I'm sorry, I have a dog throwing up. Oh, goodness. Or something. I think she's sick. Hey, hey. I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, and I, I am sorry. We have dogs and cats, and we can't. Some of them are sick and old, and they walk around. And this is the problem of working at home for you and me. But that's okay. We'll continue to plug along and, and do our best. Uh, Okay, let me do this. We're at, uh, coming up on three o'clock. Uh, I know we're set to go a little longer, but I'll tell you, I, I want to put up the review material on your site so that you have all of the printed material to be studying from as well as doing your reading assignments and taking notes. And as you notice, by the way, for uh, reading assignments uh, under Political Participation Unit 2, if you click on Reading Assignments, it uh, I set up links to uh, uh, the chapters in the various uh, uh, 
uh, various uh, uh, chapters, chapter six, seven, eight, and nine that uh, is covered on the test. So take a look at those and be working on that. Any notes that you want to take, anything you want to keep, uh, uh, your everything is open note and open access, not only to your notes, you have access to your textbook. And you also have access to the internet. You can look up terms. You can look up information on the internet. I don't mind because one of the things about learning these days is to learn how to use this dadgum internet, which is a learning tool that, good grief, if I'd have had in high school, I'd probably be a published author now because going into the library gets a little old, but you can sit here and find just anything in the world on the internet. So can you get help. And I don't mind because the more internet research you do, the better you are at it. So open internet search during the exam, as well as open notes, open book. I just want you to learn something. I want you to pick up things so that you can learn to register to vote. You can learn about how to find out about the candidates that are running for office and then decide, hmm, which one is better for me? Is it this Republican candidate or is it this Democrat candidate? And what are they, what are they saying in their campaigns? And what are people saying about it? Who is in office decides your future in large measure? So if you stay out of politics, other people are deciding what your future is going to be. You want somebody else telling you what you do, what you're supposed to do the rest of your life? That's what most of us when we're growing up want to get away from. You know, mom and dad always telling me what to do. I want to run my own life. Well, it's the same way with politics. If you're not taking part in politics, other people are making laws that affect you and that you have no control over because you didn't vote these people in who made the laws and you're stuck with the laws they made unless you go out and vote and change who's there and change the laws. Okay? Okay. Uh, let's call it a day so that I can post that for you. Email me, please, if you have questions. If I can help you, I will. So I uh, uh, stay in touch. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll have that these things posted up in the next 10, five, five, 10 or 15 yeah, minutes. Have it all done. Professor, you told me to remind you to see if you're going to open the quiz uh, for today. I'm sorry. You told me to remind you to that you're going to be a if you was going to be able to open the quiz today for me. Yeah, send me an email, would you? Okay. That'll be Sounds great. We'll, we'll set something up. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Y'all take care, and I will see you later. Stay in touch now. Bye-bye.